it in some wine. Here, drink this. Steady now. You'll be all right in a minute. We arrived just in time. Who has got the whip? I thought you had her. I went after the dwarf. She must have escaped. <coughs> the son of Adam is trying to tell us something. I... I'm sorry about... <laughs> The leopards, minotaurs, and unicorns all set off to go back to Aslan's encampment, carrying poor Edmund with them. But if they had been able to see what happened after they'd gone, they'd have been very surprised. Everything went very, very, very still. The moon had come out and was shining directly down onto a withered tree trunk and a fat, moss-covered boulder. So what you might say, so, well now, if you kept on looking, you would realize that there was something very odd about the stump and the boulder, and if you'd gone on watching, when everything had gone quite, quite quiet, you would have seen the boulder move over to the stump and start talking to it. Are you all right, Your Majesty? Of course I am, you stunted fool! I shall have my revenge. But! But! No buts! If it's war as man wants, he shall have it! You see, it was all part of the White Witch's magic to be able to make things look what they aren't. And so, when the rescue party which Aslan had sent to free Edmund had attacked. She had turned herself into the withered tree trunk and her dwarf into the moss-covered boulder. Also, in the confusion of the rescue, she kept a very firm hold on her magic wand, for if this were once lost, her evil power would be gone forever. The next morning, Peter and Lucy and Susan were awakened from a refreshing sleep on a bed of luxuriously soft cushions in Aslan's pavilion. Peter! Peter, wake up! He's outside at this very moment. Aslan is talking with him. Oh. Aslan! There is no need to talk about what is past. I'm sorry I've caused so much trouble, Peter. I didn't mean to be such a nuisance. Or oh, so unkind to you, Lucy. We were so worried about you, Edmund. Sire, there is a messenger from the enemy who craves audience. Let him approach. What is your message, son of Earth? The Queen of Narnia and Empress of the Lone Islands desires safe conduct to come and speak with you on a message that is much to your advantage as to hers. Queen of Narnia, indeed. What she? Please, Beaver. All names will soon be restored to their rightful owners. In the meantime, we will not dispute about them. Go, tell your mistress I grant her safe conduct. But only on condition that she leaves her wand at the Great Oak. Very well. I will give her your message. I hope we can trust you. That you know. But I will send my two trusted friends with you to see that she comes in good faith. Go with the son of Earth. See that my request is observed. Go! 
Oh, you'll be all right, Lucy. As I wouldn't send them if you weren't. Although Peter had been so sure that the witch couldn't harm the leopards, they were more than a little apprehensive about meeting this evil creature. But a few minutes later, the white witch came out from behind some trees with her dwarf close on her heels and the leopards either side of her and made her way into Aslan's encampment. <laughs> His offense was not against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Let us say that I have forgotten. Tell us of this deep magic. Tell you? Tell you what is written on the stone table? Tell you what is engraved on the scepter of the emperor over the sea? You know the magic the emperor put into Narnia at the very beginning. You know that every traitor belongs to me as my lawful prey. And that for every treachery, I have the right to kill. Oh, so that's why you imagine yourself queen, because you're the emperor's executioner. I see. Peace, Beaver. That human creature is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. You know the deep magic as well as I do. You know that unless I have blood, as the law says, all Narnia will be overturned and perish in a holocaust. Say 